So you have made a build of your awesome game and sent out a playable demo for the first time. Awesome, way to go. And then it happens. The comments keep piling up. I get a black screen when I start it up. I have like 2 FPS. Uh, I have really bad performance show. Man, you really need to add upscaling. Couldn't you first optimize or something? Yes, even the first alpha version of your game should at least have a minimal amount of performance optimization. Of course you have been able to run the game yourself. As a game developer you probably have a beast PC, at least compared with your average casual gamer. When sending out a playable demo you need to make sure your playtesters are actually able to run it at all. And yeah, game optimization can be a very daunting task. What to do, where to begin, how to measure. But luckily there are a lot of things you can do to make your game run better. In this two part video I'm going to take a deep dive into some known and some more obscure ways to get your game to run great. To start off you need to understand that there are a few different kinds of optimizations you can do. You can optimize the CPU, the GPU, the CPU memory better known as RAM and the GPU memory better known as VRAM. Each of these elements are totally different beasts. So here are the basics. The amount of frames per second is called the frame rate, or FPS in short. In an ideal world, when a game doesn't lock the FPS, then the GPU will be used 100%. If it is, and the frame rate is still low, then the game is GPU bound, or GPU limited. And you should probably look into optimizing the GPU side. However, if the FPS is unlocked and the GPU is only used like 50%, then the CPU can't send enough data to the GPU fast enough. In this case, your game is CPU bound and you will need to look into the CPU side of optimization. The difficulty here is that every PC is different and it may be that you test your game on a PC that has a very strong GPU and you notice that your CPU is limiting the frame rate. But it is a big possibility that your end users have a much weaker GPU. The best way to optimize your game is to test and measure on a PC that has the specs of your targeted minimal hardware requirements. Here is some information about each of the different elements in short. Think of the CPU as the brains of the operation. The CPU does a lot of calculations and sends the results to the GPU as fast as it can. Modern CPUs all have multiple cores, meaning they can do multiple calculations at the same time. CPUs are created to do a wide array of things and prefer to have a few big calculations instead of many, many, many smaller ones. The more and smaller the amount of calculations become, the less efficient the CPU becomes. This is a problem with games, because games generally have lots and lots of small calculations. This is the reason why in games you almost never see the CPU being used 100%. The better the code of the game engine and the better your own code, the more efficient the CPU can run and the higher percentage of usage you can achieve. However, don't think that you will be able to max out the CPU with good optimization. This almost never happens and certainly not in Unity. Now if your project ends up being limited by the CPU, you will most likely see a lower FPS, frame drops and often stuttering. The CPU memory, or better known as RAM, is the memory of the CPU. Here is where it stores all the information on your active scenes, all the booleans, integers, lists and arrays are stored here. But also some of your audio files, models and textures based on their import settings. Basically everything that is referenced in your scene or by code is loaded into the RAM. If the RAM is full, then it'll use the hard drive as additional RAM space. However, because hard drives are much slower than RAM, and even worse, the road from RAM to hard drive is even slower, it's best described as a highway. With a lot of traffic, swapping from the RAM to the hard drive or back is an instant traffic jam. If your game is using more memory than is available, you will probably see sudden frame rate stutters due to the swapping and in some extreme cases the game may even crash. The GPU is the opposite from the CPU. It loves doing many many small calculations, but too many is still too many. So if the CPU sends more information than the GPU can handle, the CPU will have to wait until the GPU is ready for more data. Generally this will result in a semi-stable but still lower FPS than you'd probably prefer. 
And lastly, we have the GPU memory or VRAM. The GPU memory holds all the textures that are used in your game. The higher the texture resolution, the more space it takes. If the VRAM is full, it'll swap it with the RAM. Both RAM and VRAM are very fast, but again, when swapping between them happens, it is an instant traffic jam on the highway. Some platforms like the newer Silicon Macs and certain consoles don't have this problem because they share the RAM between the CPU and the GPU. This is great for the swapping, but on those devices often the amount of RAM is limited exactly because it's shared. Just as with the RAM, when your game is using more VRAM than is available, you will probably see frame rate stutters due to the swapping, and on certain more strict platforms, the games may even crash. All right, optimization time. Starting with the CPU optimization, the one where you can probably do the most good. The biggest part of Unity is a total black box. Not much to do when for some reason certain processes take a lot longer on the CPU. However, the rule of thumb is that every component, even disabled, takes a small amount of CPU resources. So if you don't need it anymore, get rid of it. All code that you create runs on the CPU. Like every if statement you create in an update call, no matter how small, will run on every frame, taking up precious resources. And I'll even do you one better. If you create a new script component and you won't use the update function, remove it straight away, because update calls always take CPU resources, even when they're empty. Just a little, but many times a very little bit, is still a lot. And the higher your frame rate, the more you are even wasting these resources. There's also not much control you have over Unity's physics system. It updates on the fixed update time. The fixed update runs at a different speed than the normal update to make sure that all physics run based on time instead of how high or low your frame rate is. Now normally the fixed update is set to run 50 times per second, meaning that if your game runs at 60 FPS, the fixed update doesn't run every frame. However, say that your game has a frame rate locked to 30 FPS. Now, if you leave the fixed update to the default setting, then it will be called twice on almost all frames, which is a waste. So if you are locking your FPS to 30, you can change the fixed time step to 0.033 to make it run only 30 times per second, only about once per frame. Alternatively, if your game is targeting a very high frame rate, but you don't need accurate physics, Increasing the time step can offer additional CPU resources. Now, our object-oriented programming brain is often a total buzzkill for performance. For instance, if you have 500 cubes all doing some sort of movement, ray casting and distance checks to not bump into one another, we have been thought to give each cube its own behavior. But in many cases, this is much slower than if you would just make one controller script that loops through all the objects, all the cubes, and does all the movement, ray cast, and distance checks combined. And even better, making one class that does all these calculations makes it a lot easier later on to multi-thread the code by using Unity's job system, for example. In City of Springs, I use this to do 10,000 ray casts every frame for every enemy within the viewing distance of your camera to create a super accurate vision cone. These kinds of calculations would normally cripple my game's performance if I did it the old-fashioned way. But by using Unity's job system, it's almost free. And now, what are the things you shouldn't do? I know this is a toughie, but try not to use multiple cameras at the same time even if the camera component has been set up not to render anything by setting the culling mask to nothing, it adds a massive CPU overhead, killing your game's performance. This is a huge design flaw in Unity's automated black box systems, but until they change it, and they will never do it, it will eat up your game's performance. So please, try not to. Originally, I used a secondary camera in City of Springs to create some visual effects. It had a culling mask set to nothing, so it didn't render anything, but it still lowered my frame rate by 20%. In my experience, almost everything that you do with a secondary camera, you can also do in another way without the extra camera. So if you have the time, do some research on how to prevent having to use the secondary camera. And one last but very important thing to try to never do 
The information road from the CPU to the GPU is a one-way street. Once data is in the GPU, it is very difficult and very slow to get it back up to the CPU. And this sounds quite technical, and it is. In Unity, you can do this easily by, for example, trying to get the pixel color of a render texture. The render texture is created by the CPU and then filled with data in the GPU. And to get the pixel data of the pixel color from the render texture in code, you have to make a call from the CPU to the GPU to provide this data and send it back to the CPU. This takes a long time. And if you do this every frame, it will take a massive performance drain. All right, so now that we know some stuff on CPU optimization, how to measure it. When optimizing the CPU side, the profiler tool is your best friend. This tool is pretty useful for CPU optimization and probably nothing else. It can give you very detailed information on everything that the CPU does. Unfortunately, it's not very useful for the GPU side, but it may give you a good estimation for what is taking up many resources. For memory, however, it's totally useless. Unity can tell you how much memory your project is using in the editor because it can differentiate between your project and Unity itself. So for memory optimization, you'll need another tool. Now see those nice colored lines? The actual colors may vary, so I'll just stick to the colors as I see them. This is all the accumulated rendering time my CPU needs to render each frame in this project. See the other tab? I usually disable this tab because it is the CPU overhead of the Unity editor itself. Now, those resources will be gone in a build, so no need to profile them, at least not for now. We're not trying to profile the editor. The green line is caused by Unity's rendering, at least it is in the legacy render pipeline. In URP and HDRP, the more modern render pipelines, they are blue combined with the rest of all the scripts, which is a bit of a bummer. Now, when you click somewhere, the game pauses and you can see all the information on that particular frame. There are two ways to get the information presented. Both are pretty useful in their own way. I normally prefer the hierarchy way, unless I have to debug multi-threaded code. To keep things simple, on the right you see the time in milliseconds. This is the amount of rendering time that a certain object is using. If you like to take a look into your own code in the update loop, you can look it up in the update.script run behavior update tab. Open it up and you'll see all your scripts that are doing an update called this frame. As you can see, I have a few update calls in City of Spring that are taking quite a lot of rendering time. Some of them I have already optimized into multi-threaded code, but for many of them it was either not effective or I simply didn't have enough time to optimize them properly. In our testing of City of Springs, we have reached our targeted minimum hardware requirements, so no further optimization was needed at the time. Now, the further you unfold the profiler stack, the more specific towards a single component you can go. However, if you want to know the cost of a specific piece of code or function within a class, you'll need to enable deep profiling. Now, deep profiling is both a blessing and a curse. When it is enabled, it will give you the exact frame time of everything that is happening in each frame but it also drastically lowers your frame rate because Unity has to work very hard to calculate all the render time of everything. The frame times you see with the deep profiling are way, way higher than normal, as you can see. But you can still figure out which specific function or for loop is the most CPU intensive. But beware, if you like searching for every tiniest bit of optimization, you may suddenly find yourself two weeks later with a mere 0.01 milliseconds shaved off your project. So don't take it too far. Ah, <sighs> time to take a break. Optimization is a never ending task, so I recommend not to stick with it for too long a time. Alternate it with something fun, like gameplay programming. Because if you don't, you'll probably go absolutely bonkers. So next week, in part two of this video, we're going to take a deep dive into memory and GPU optimization. I hope you liked this video yet again. Don't hesitate to let me know by either liking or disliking this video. And I'll see you next time.
Yeah, 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 yeah